It's probably one of the best big fish techniques when you're actually down in the state of Florida or pretty much anywhere across the country. It's actually going to be punching. I'm talking about breaking out a big weight, breaking out a big rod and big line because it's something that people don't ever talk about. And so today what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through how I actually go about punching. Some of the things that I don't think people fully understand about it, all the different size weights that you can use punching and basically my entire setup and I'm gonna break down the cast and everything. So stick around. If you live in an area where you always hear guys talk about punching and you want to learn a little bit more about it, you're not going to want to miss this video. So when you think about states like Florida, Louisiana, sometimes Alabama, all these southern states, you think about guys throwing big weights, flipping grass mats, flipping reed clumps, flipping, you know, floating hydrilla, hyacinth mats, all of these things, because punching is just a phenomenal technique to catch these really, really big fish because it's a big presentation. But how do you go about doing it? What's the deal, right? You hear about it, but Nobody really talks about it, it seems like, in the industry. There's a couple guys that do it a ton. JT Kenny always does it a bunch, Randall Tharp. But let's talk about the actual setup and actually how you go about punching. The first thing you need is you need a compact style bait. That is really, really important for this setup. But before that, let me see if I can get this baby off of there. You gotta have heavy line. So this is Cortland Master Braid 65 pound line. And then if you'll notice, it's actually pretty light colored. What you wanna do with your punching weights is you actually take a Sharpie, one of these big fat ones, and you actually color the lineup. You might ask why you color the lineup. Well, when you color the lineup, it's because that dark Sharpie will actually help that moss green or that lighter faded line blend in under the mat. Because when you're punching, it's darker underneath of there. So darker colors work and darker line works better. So the next thing you need is you need a bobber stop, a weight, not necessarily always a big weight, which is gonna be a key that I'm gonna talk about. And then I like a trocar flipping hook. It has a super sweet point on it, but you need a stout flipping hook. I like a straight shank, some other guys don't, but a straight shank works the best for me because it's more streamlined with the bait and then it doesn't flex out. So let's talk about the first misconception with punching is that you have to use a heavy weight. You do not always have to use a heavy weight. That is one thing that I wanna throw right out the window. What you wanna do is you wanna use the lightest weight possible, but the heaviest weight you need to. And so sometimes that might be an ounce and a half. Sometimes that might be a two ounce. Sometimes it might even be as light as, I think I have a 3 16 on here. And it can be anywhere in between there. If you're fishing windblown mats, mats of just flat, scattered grass that is pushed into a corner, you might only need uh, you know, five eighths and you'd be perfect to get right through it. And the smaller the weight you can use, the better you are because if you look at a big weight, when you set the hook on there, you're taking away from the gap of your hook. So you can see the smaller the weight, the bigger this gap is gonna be and the better your hookup ratio is gonna go because when you set the hook with a big weight, it pops that fish's mouth open. We've heard it time and time again. So the smaller the weight you have, the better off you're going to be. That's just plain and simple. And if you'll notice, when I set the hook like this, that hook kicks out. That's because I've tied a snail knot on there, which purposely kicks that hook out. Because using this heavy line, I wanna give myself the best opportunity. And when I snell it like that, you can see it kicks it right out. So when that fish eats it, you set the hook, you can see that's gonna go into the roof of the fish's mouth. Or if they eat it funny, it's gonna go into their bottom jaw. Either way, great hookup opportunities to get those fish in the boat. But if you're using too big a weight, you're gonna lose fish. Once you start to get above that ounce and a half, that's when you start to pop those fish's mouth open, which is why the hook set with this bait is so important. So that's something we're gonna talk about here in a minute. Let's talk about the bait first. So when I'm punching, I like a streamline style bait. And this is actually a Z-Man Gremlin. Let me see if I have one in the box. So they actually don't come looking like this. I have one right here, brand new. They actually come looking like a creature bait. But what I've done is I've taken a pair of scissors and I actually cut these little tentacles off the bottom, like so. And once you cut those tentacles off, it actually creates a super sweet flipping profile bait, just like that. And I like that bait because it has a thicker center that hides that hook really well. If you have a really thin style bait, what's gonna end up happening is your hook is gonna wanna break through all the time, and you're gonna get stuck in every single mat that you punch, and it's gonna drive you up a freaking wall. I know it does me. So what I do after that is I break these little tentacles free, just like this. So now you can see those legs are gonna actually get a little bit of movement when you're shaking it under that mat, which is super, super important. And so now that I've snelled it, and if you don't know how to snell, uh, tie a snell knot, you can go back on the channel and look through my shorts. I actually have a short on how to snell it. So all I'm gonna do is take 
insert it about half inch or quarter inch, pull it up through, bring it in, just Texas rig it, just like I would normally. And that's how you, that's your basic punching setup. So the next important part is actually the rod and the reel because guys, I've seen so many people under gun punching with the rod. You gotta remember you're going in and out of vegetation. So if you hook anything over three pounds, it can be a fight to the death where sometimes you have to pin them and just take off with the trolling motor in there to get those fish out versus other times you're bringing everything back. So a heavy rod is necessary, but you want a heavy parabolic bend rod because when you have a pinch point where that bait's going in and you're kind of at an angle, when you set the hook, that fish has the opportunity to run into a lot of stuff. And so if you have a stiff rod, what's gonna happen is it's just gonna let loose, all your pressure's gonna come off and they have the opportunity to shake that hook really, really easily. And so I like the Arc Essence, it's a 711 heavy because it loads up super nice. And so that way when those fish are under there shaking, kind of like when a fish is on a crankbait, when they're shaking and they you know, are going crazy with those treble hooks, it kind of gives a cushion. Same thing, but in a different action with this rod. The next thing is you want a lot of torque when you're fighting these fish in these mats, because again, you hook a five pounder, six, eight, 10 pounder under one of these mats, it's gonna feel like you're trying to move the earth. So I actually downsize and go to a seven to one gear ratio reel because I get more torque, but then I also get the speed that I need to be able to make a lot of flips throughout the day. But enough about the setup, which is all gonna be linked down below. Let's talk about how to actually punch. So I should insert some chest footage right now. So when everybody thinks punching, they think these great big hyacinth mats and these great big hydrilla mats, but a lot of punching is actually fishing bank grass like this, where it's just matted over vegetation up along the bank that these fish are hanging in. And so I only have a 5 8 ounce weight on this bait right now because that's all I physically need to get it into a lot of stuff. And so when I'm going down the bank, there's a specific way you cast that's actually going to make it advantageous to actually how to actually do this. So when I do this, I start with this right about here and you'll notice I bring the rod straight back to where it's up and I give myself a little extra line. So this is perfect. If you look back in here, you can actually see there's duckweed mat back in there. That's a great place for a big fish to get some shade and get out of there. So as I flip it, I'm gonna lift my rod back, giving it some slack to give that line, that bait line to fall free instead of having to try to feed it with the reel. When I let it open and bring it back, I'm actually using that line to follow forward. So that way if a fish hits it, as soon as it goes through there, I'm already tight to it. So to make this cast, I flip and bring the rod straight up and I give myself enough for the distance of the water. So what I'm trying to do is I don't wanna be in a position where my bail is open when a fish eats that. I wanna have it to where when I flip, I give myself enough line that when I come down, I'm already tight to it. So if a fish is there, I can already hit it versus having to try to click it over and then hit it. So I'm lifting the rod up, bringing it back, giving it line, letting it fall down through. And then all I'm gonna do is hop it a couple of times in there. And that's specifically the key right there. So the key for me is how many times you hop it back in where you're pitching. So if I get it right in those logs right there, when I flip, I'm only gonna hop it two or three times before I pull it out and keep on moving. Because punching, when you're doing this, most of the time it's a reaction where you punch it in there and you hop it a couple of times and a lot of your bites are gonna come as soon as it breaks through. And so as soon as it breaks through, a lot of times it'll feel like it never even made it to the bottom. You'll flip it in there, it'll hit, and you'll go to pick up and it just, you'll feel either straight weight or you'll feel a fish pulling on it. And so your hook set is gonna actually be super, super important. Your hook set isn't gonna be a drop and smack it. What your hook set is gonna be, let's see if I can get a nice map. What your hook set is gonna be is you're gonna lift up, you're gonna feel it, and then all you do is lean because you're straight braid on 65 pound line and a very heavy rod. So if you try to crack them, all you're gonna do is pop their mouth open and absolutely miss almost every single fish. And so that's why when you flip it in there, as it's going down, let's say you feel a bite, all you're doing is leaning on it because you have so little stretch in there, it's gonna expose that hook and stick that fish every single time. And it'll slowly push that hook into the roof of that fish's mouth instead of popping their mouth open it'll just slowly pull into it and that's going to be huge when you're actually punching and flipping these mats hopefully that helped you guys learn how to punch a little bit better if that situation ever arises for you if you guys aren't into punching as much i'll have a video linked up here where i talk about a wacky rig and a sanko and how i rig it to help you catch more fish because pretty soon that's going to be playing all around the country as soon as the weather warms up so hopefully you guys will like that video but thank you guys so much for watching god bless and i hope to see you guys in the next video